A year ago, I installed my first SRAM Axis drivetrain, and there was a lot to love about this wireless shifting technology. I spent six months riding on the system, and I got to know it very well. The performance was impressive, and there's no question this cable-free ecosystem is here to stay. But this summer, I quietly shifted back to cables, and well, there's been a ton of comments on the channel asking why. So today, I figured I'd tell you all why it wasn't working out for me, and why despite that, I still think this is an awesome system. I'll start with what I love about it, but first, I had to give a quick shout out to Sean at Plus One Bikes. He supports this channel, and without his help, I wouldn't be able to make videos like this one happen. Right now, he's offering 30% off on all SRAM products, wireless or otherwise, with free fast shipping and awesome service. I'll put all of the discount codes in the description below, along with offers from my other channel supporters, Spokex Custom Wheels and Hand Up Gloves. Okay, so back to what I do love about it, the most obvious plus, and that's the lack of cables and uh, how easy it is to install. I had set mine up with a reverb dropper and that left me with only two brake cables. The whole cockpit area was just super clean and clutter-free. And I remember like looking at the bill when I was done and I just kind of stared at it. I thought the whole thing looked really great. My current bikes have tube and tube cable routing. So running cables from the front to the back of the bike is pretty easy. Uh, but there's been a lot of bikes that I've built up over the years that don't have that. And they require a ton of like frustrating negotiation to get the housing through. So having the ability to skip all of that is a real game changer, for sure. Pairing everything up through the app was really straightforward. Um, indexing was pretty simple, and I have to say SRAM did a good job making everything really, really easy. There's also some flexibility in the shifter setup, which I appreciated. Um, I got the optional rocker paddle, kind of wish it was the original one, but uh, yeah, I liked it a lot more than the guy that came on it. And I used the app to flip the shift directions. And uh, I gotta say that made everything a lot more intuitive for me personally. But uh, this paddle ended up being the first problem I had with the whole system. I have short thumbs and for me to be able to reach the shifter, I have to mount it pretty far in towards the grips. Both paddle options have minimal clearance from the grip. In most cases, this isn't a big issue. However, on long, steep descents, my knuckle was rubbing up against the edge and it was really, really painful. Um, this isn't something I've had as an issue with any other shifter before, and um, there was no way I could really solve it. I, I used the SRAM matchmaker setup and the bracket that comes stock with it, moved it in every array possible, and nothing would work. So that, uh, that was a problem. Now, that one is pretty specific, but the next two things I've actually heard from a number of other people as well. And the first is that there's actually a big difference in the tactile feel of electronic shifting. It's actually pretty cool in its own right, but I never really got used to it. I found myself frequently looking down, just wondering what gear I was in. And if I needed to shift really quickly, like let's say I was going from a descent into a steep climb, I never really felt like I could quickly find the gear I was after. Now, I figured I'd adapt more over time, but six months of riding on the system and that never really improved. The second issue, how noisy the derailleur was. Now, I assumed it would actually be a bit quieter because there were no longer any cables to cause little rattles. But if you think about it, cable housing is relatively stiff. And in that short distance, going from the routing on the chainstay to the mech, it's providing a good bit of support. And if you remove that support, you're now allowing the derailleur to flop around much more. Now, this seems like a likely source for excessive chain slap. Um, it could also be just a lighter clutch design, but it really didn't feel that much different than its cable counterparts. A couple of years ago, I made a short video on my hesitancy towards access because I really wasn't trying to add more battery management into my life than necessary. Now, the comments on that video and elsewhere thoroughly convinced me that this was a non-issue and I expected it wouldn't be a part of any deal breakers for me. But I was finding myself going through a charge much faster than other people typically experienced. And I think this just boils down to how often I move my bike around. 
The system goes into a sleep mode to preserve battery when not in use. Now, it's designed to wake up with motion and my bike gets shuffled around quite a bit. I ride pretty often and I also travel with my bike frequently. So my guess is that even when driving, there's enough occasional bumps to put the system on alert, excessively running down the charge. So there's my thoughts and I still think Axis is super cool. Now, these things could easily be non-issues for you and I'm all for people finding what works for them and enjoying every bit of it. If there's one thing I've learned over the years, it's to keep an open mind with new technology because as you'll see in this video here, many of the best innovations in mountain biking weren't always that great in the beginning. So go give that video a watch next because it'll shed a lot of light on why I'm confident wireless shifting is not only here to stay, but it's probably gonna get really good in the years to come.